So as a standalone anime, I think this is absolutely horrible. But as an ending for Wake Up Girls, I think it was kind of okay. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome to The Weeb Initiative, I'm your host The Weeb. This is a show where every other week I'll be talking about anime, manga and everything in between. This week I'll be talking about the last entry on Wake Up Girls, Wake Up Girls new chapter. But before I start some disclaimers, it's probably a little bit talking about most of the things that happen in this season. Although there are not that many things to really discuss on and I think really there are no twists for the spoilers to actually affect something. So anyways, that's the warning. Next thing, let's start with the stats. So, Wake Up Girls new chapter was originally released in October 2017 and ended on January 2018. The Wikipedia says 13 episodes. All the versions I could find say 12. I couldn't find the 13th episode. I Apparently, I don't know what that's about, but okay. The studio that made it was Millie Pens, the same guys who helped with the animation for the movies before this, both Shadow Fuel and Beyond the Bottom. Though I don't see anywhere the mention of Ordet, I don't know if Ordet fell off or was disbanded, I don't know if it was incorporated, I don't have that kind of information here. Sorry, but easy to say that this points to the first, the, the cautionary tale of the industry that is when the anime changes studio for the most part, it means it will end and probably be bad. That is to say, this season is not great in many ways. So, starting with the story, it's pretty simple and I think I prefer to really explain just the plot points. So this is to say that this may be a short kind of review because I don't want to actually actually try to bed this out too much, but also because there are not many things to talk about. The first thing is, the first plot point is that after the end of the last movie, Beyond the Bottom, the girls got the first place on the Idol Festival back in 2015. 2016, I won one the idol festival and now we are in 2017 and the girls need to do something otherwise they are going to fall out and becoming irrelevant and everything that entails with working in the showbiz and not being relevant anymore with that said the girls need to kind of at the very start of the season it feels kind of weird because of, i start from the beginning the first thing that will be really noticeable and I think in many ways a kind of confusion is that they change the whole of the art style. This does not entail anything with the story itself but it is something that I need to say at the very beginning of the review because this is something that kind of threw me off a lot and it piles on to a whole lot of things that happened at the beginning that felt really disconnected from the original, let's say the original series, the original trilogy, if you can say that, the first season the and the two movies and or so on and so forth. You can say that they changed for a somewhat better, let's say, art style overall something that we would, let's say, be more accepting nowadays, a bit more clean, a bit more bright, a bit more detailed kind of art style, though I would say the animation took a major hit with it, and not only that, but there are some, not really frames, but some of the character poses and some of the photography doesn't actually help. The, I would like to say that the girls look like dolls, on some instances and not in a good sense. It feels like it's lifeless sometimes and in general it feels a bit jarring, but that that's not the main point here. So the girls basically have to rebuild their, their reputation more or less because they already fell out in 2016 and now 2017 they need to actually do something, otherwise they are going to 
Fallout. The thing is, the first thing that Junko emits that the whole crew is basically the same at this point. Junko has this brilliant idea of making a national tour and releasing the first album for the girls, one thing tied to the other, so they need, they will release the album and the tour to promote the album. Pretty standard fare, considering music, the music industry in general. With that said, the whole thing kind of starts really weird with the girls need to now get this reputation to actually promote the tour and so on and so forth. And besides that, we have, actually, there is this one plot point which is kind of weird in a way I don't actually remember what was the reasoning they gave but in order to create more cohesion with the girls and the girls being like being more let's say united Junko pays for a house for the seven of them to live together and so they need to the seven of them live as let's say sisters somewhat in a shared house it is let's say it is a plot point that they could have explored more, I think. It is really run-of-the-mill, pretty simple stuff. Really, let's say, a really, like, cute slice-of-life stuff They that happens in the house because they don't actually have any conflict whatsoever considering they live together. There are no, there are no hijinks with anything, really, considering that there are no boys involved, too. That we don't actually have the usual tropes of cohabitation and so on and so forth but the thing is just a plot point they throw out there it, it is easier to them to introduce the girls in the same scene without needing actually to develop a good background a detailed background for whatever place they're on but also because it is easier to introduce scenes where the girls are together for one reason or another because they live together now. With that said, there's another plot point that they introduced in the first episode that is, at this point, 2017, the girls already have a somewhat of a name for themselves, at the very least, Loco to Sendai at this point. And for the most part, with the girls having a bit of name, they start having fans and we are introduced to three fans that actually are uh, middle schoolers. There are three girls that are really big fans of Wake Up Girls. And one of them specifically is more inspired by I1. But that's a detail that we don't actually bring to light much. Because she's the extra of the extra. The main of these three girls is the one that talks the most. But she does not bring anything to the story really. And... This is the main thing and a recurring theme on this season is that this season will try to balance a lot of plot points and really try to bring them all in one episode and not be good in any of them. With that said, so we have, um, I think from the second episode to the fourth, maybe fifth, we have each of the girls more or less being introduced to a new job and in doing that they need to actually develop their their skills and struggle a bit to then get some kind of development it really brought me a sense that they are they were trying to do something akin to cinderella girls specifically i don't mess cinderella girls and it felt like this at the beginning but after like the I think the third instance instance of this whole thing, it kind of the mess kind of fell off, and and then I could like yeah they tried this. I don't know if they were they were actually going for it. I don't know if they wanted to do it like they did there, and it is really confusing because the tone is not really set for the season. Because and here's the thing, I I think it's better to preface everything with this now rather than talk about this later but watching this actually gave me a huge uh it reminded me a lot of the same feeling of the fourth season of high school dxd when the anime basically changed hands from tnk i don't actually remember who got it the studio that got to do the fourth season right now but I remember the original was TNK and then the fourth one was someone else. And it had that same feeling because the third season there had a somewhat conclusive ending. And they didn't actually need to do a fourth season if you consider the story 
presented and they still did with the fourth season the fourth season feels disconnected from the rest of the whole narrative and the whole thing and whatever and yeah 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 you know what i'm talking about this one feels somewhat the same because the ending of the last movie beyond the bottom had a pretty conclusive they lived happily ever after considering the ending and to bring up this series two years later and nearly three years later really to then bring a new studio and basically show off the girls entering again in the struggle of working on media and showbiz something that they were already good at by the end of the i think the first movie the second movie maybe the first season really it really just feels weird and in this way if you it really feels like they didn't really have much to work with at the very beginning and this compounds into this overarching like sentiment that this whole thing is just um cash grab because we have the ip and we might as well use it or they had the girls already on payroll and might as well because the art style is different the animation is different the whole thing is different and now they're introducing three new characters the girls are going on a national tour the whole thing kind of feels kind of weird and i don't know at this point if the story is going to mainly be about the girls I already know or the development of these three new girls and the whole thing kind of doesn't sit right and <laughs> that's the major thing that happens from there we get some uh, minor cameos from other parts of the story story some things that kind of bring closure to things that the movie came up with and didn't actually finish and also some things that really leave some questions not answered but basically we by the time we reach i don't know the seventh episode or something like that we have uh, something happening on inside i1 because again they are failing their sales targets and not only that but again we are dealing with this center competition to decide which girl is going to be the center and but by now we have shiho working on nakata and mocha apparently was the promised child because they said so in the and I think was Shadow of Youth, but at the same time she's failing and the whole thing kind of feels weird because they don't actually develop this plot point whatsoever. They didn't develop back then and didn't develop here because they don't actually give any explanations and they just expect the public to know that. I don't... I don't understand not only that but then we have and this is a thing that i noticed kind of halfway through the anime but really kind of grabbed me is that i think for the most part matsuda doesn't actually have that many lines of things considered either him or junko both of them don't have that many lines of things of things considered compared to the first season the the first movie first season and Shadow of Youth and Beyond the Bottom, but at the same time, Junko especially, I think, was really, she really changed in a way, because she had that more straightforward, aggressive, violent, most parts, kind of way, really out there, and although she didn't change in that regard, the things that she does became really minute, in a way, she does a lot of things way less and also they deleted the trope of the you can't smoke here i don't know if that is to denote character development or what but she has way less lines and basically shoves everything to matsuda to do and even though she does that matsuda doesn't actually have that many lines to begin with so it feels like there's a lack of something there the, there's like there's a character missing more or less because Matsuda doesn't actually change that much he helps somewhat more and so on and so forth but at the same time you don't actually see any of them actually actually working on or talking to people other than the girls for the most part and with that also there's a few more points but the ones that I want to bring up is that at one point we get to basically have a bit of insight on Hayasaka because obviously they need to actually drag him into this mess and at this point he's 
the same high as, uh, as always, self-centered, narcissistic, and so on and so forth. But uh, we actually get to see an uh, internal struggle that he has with his past, considering that he w was uh, arrogant towards ex-bandmates and so on and so forth, colleagues. And this kind of brought kind of... Uh, weigh him down more or less and the whole thing kind of feels like yeah we're trying to develop develop something here but that's also something that they don't actually get the time to do and the story goes uh, as it does there are minor conflicts uh, in between episodes like one episode they have Kaya and Minami will have one conflict because uh, Minami can eat all she wants and doesn't actually get fat but then at some point Kaya notices that she is getting fat because she has to work with food and the whole thing kind of works out somewhat then later on also Minami and Nanami get, they get into a kind of discussion to because of their work one with the other and the whole thing kind of it feels pretty petty pretty vain it doesn't bring anything and they don't they don't really fight for anything it doesn't have any stakes and it feels like they add this kind of conflict just to add just to pad the time really of the episode because frankly it's a nothing <laughs> i'm sorry for using this kind of term but Come on, it's a better, best thing I can think right now. It's a nothing burger. Every single one of the conflicts is is nothing. Is nothing. It doesn't carry any weight towards the plot or the characters whatsoever. And at one point towards the later half of the season, one of these conflicts, I think more than one even, is resolved off screen and like why did you need to add that in the first place if you're just going to resolve this off screen in the same episode doesn't doesn't really make sense and that's more or less it like we have also a um, perspective of Shiho Shiho was the ex center of I1 but she was moved to Nakata and so on and so forth but then we have a perspective a bit of her perspective on everything that's happening because she now likes the new group she's she's formed with the other girls from I1 that I think the unit is called Next Storm she actually likes there she wants to work with them and so on and so forth and at some point it is threatened she bails on I1 because I1 is doing a lot of restructuring and the whole thing kind of feels messy because they try to cram everything in a really really short time and basically the story comes and goes like this the whole thing is really crammed they try to bring a lot of stuff to the table but they don't actually get good results because they don't actually develop anything there is also something that happens later on this season later on i think it's not really later on later on but it it is somewhat of uh, uh, something of later half of the season. They introduce the new antagonist because at this point I1 is not an antagonist. It's just someone on the side. That is this Viaro called, I think, Machina X. And considering the time frame, considering the way they describe it and so on and so forth. I think it's a major, major shot at Kizuna Ai. Kizuna Ai was the original, original VTuber. I think that at the very least the original big VTuber that came out. And I think considering the time frame it is on that, I don't think I there is a there is another theory on my part that it was a shot at Vocaloid, but at the same time Vocaloid is not on the same time frame, 2017, I think we didn't actually have that prominent of uh, Vocaloid presence anymore, I think the heyday of Vocaloid was a bit back uh, for something like 2015, maybe earlier, and the whole thing is, they, they <laughs> get some shots at Kizuna Ai in this form, of Mike and Ix, I feel like, and how the company behind her basically takes over all of the stadiums in Japan, and this eventually gets to be, a, let's say, an obstacle for the girls, and also a point of failure, let's say, for the girls from I1, 
and something that rallies both Shiho and Hayasaka to help the girls and, and the whole thing kind of it kind of works out if you if you squint your eyes a bit, if you don't, if you don't care that much, the story kind of makes sense somewhat, and it it kind of feels okay. But this is me like inferring a lot of stuff. There, there are a lot of stuff that they don't talk anywhere, they don't say anywhere. I feel like they wanted to be inferred, and I feel like that if you're leaving something so obvious to be inferred by your audience you should at the very least like give a bit of context because if it is obvious like this it should be explained by the anime i think but then again i'm talking about an anime from 2017 that absolutely nobody watched whatsoever i'm pretty sure and so the thing is story is a mess the absolutely the, everything is a mess the two high points that i need to actually talk about really is the 11th and the 12th episode the 11th episode is really really cute because they at this point the three fans that they have are helping them with things on the production office so basically junko hires them to be helpers and they eventually kind of by proxy become understudies for the girls so they become like idols in training and on the 11th episode they get this opportunity to open the show for the girls their the last live concert that they will do for the tour will be opened by the three girls who were their fans and so they actually have a real song and the whole thing it is quite cute the the scene is quite cute it's pretty pretty nice and uh, that's the 11th episode. The 11th episode is just cute. Now, the 12th episode, I need to give some highlights, really. The first thing is that we have so many search songs. We go through the whole library of Wake Up Girls in search songs. It's pretty... I mean, it's not like the f we have, like, I don't know, seven full songs, but we have, the at the very least, the intros and, the, let's say, TV size of... I think seven songs and it's pretty nice including the new one that they do for this album called Polaris that is not the opening uh, to be real here it's not the opening it's an actual new insert song and together with that we have also an insert song for the the understudies the let's say kohai at this point that their unit is called run girls run and they have their own insert song which is pretty nice it, it is let's say at this point in the anime it, those are some details that they ne didn't need to actually do but i feel really happy and and i need to actually give kudos because it is such a small detail some, something that they didn't actually need to take the time to produce i think but the fact that they did is really nice and not only that but we also have an insert song for i1 the only one we have that is like tv size one one and a half minutes i think and it's a pretty good song actually and the, the whole thing kind of feels right feels good and basically that's it the um, they end the episode basically pretty okay announcing that there will be a new because at this point the concert is on the christmas eve of 2017 so this year we didn't have the idol festival but they end the episode saying that there will be a new one considering the continuity of the series i can assure you that there was not to be seen with that said let's let me give my opinion on some other stuff so let's start from the beginning first things first let's just start with the fact that this is a whole different anime from the previous ones the animation is different, the art's different, the, the um, art is really, really different, but you can actually kind of get accustomed to it. The thing that really bothered me, uh, first off, right, the one thing that I actually noticed front and center is the soundscape of the whole thing. So they actually add this kind of music to the background whenever there is this slice of life, like discussion, really light stuff. And I feel like it was really close to like menu music for, I don't know, Persona, 
not necessarily Persona 5, because Persona 5 had, had its own kind of deal, but something akin to a dating sim feels really close to it. Not only that, but the, the whole soundscape doesn't kind of feel right for the most part. The, the songs, the insert songs and the whole part of music really feels okay, feels on par with everything else, but uh, the soundscape really like, what the hell is, am I listening to? That is not like detrimental really, but it is something that I noticed and kind of feels off place. That being said, the next thing is the animation. The, I, it took me a while to actually notice because after I noticed it, I couldn't like stop noticing this. They really chipped out on animation and I can say for certain that at the very least for everything that's not consider, uh, not in a stage with the girls dancing, the animation's really, really, really simple. They do most static poses, close up, everything on the book that cheapens out the, the whole experience. So again, static poses, close ups, uh, that thing where they pan out the shots so the girls don't actually move that much. Even in some instances where let's say the otakus like Otasan appear and discuss how Wake Up Girls is doing, they do this kind of pen shot of just the entrance of the cafe and not them exactly talking and they do the the, the gag with the qu keep quiet and they don't actually finish that was sacrilegious all things considered and I was really mad when I saw it not only that but this happens a lot they try to use this kind of more I, I would say it's a Monogatari kind of do, <laughs> although it's not Monogatari, the original guys who did this, but it, it feels like it's a Monogatari kind of thing where they like focus on another point on the room to actually do the talking and don't actually animate anything. They also all the framing really cuts up a lot and everything nothing really moves outside of the mouths of the girls and maybe the eyes everything else just stays static it's really 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 boring really really flat and not only that right the, the next thing the way that they do the episodes really pisses me off it feels like i'm watching the this new kind of ADHD video because every two seconds they're cutting to a new thing to a new scene to whatever like come on man uh, let me like digest what I just heard uh, oh someone's giving a emotional speech okay let's just cut up to random lesson from I one or something like that like come on man what please some time here just to like get the drama get the the feels convey the message like it, it feels really jarring in that way too the whole thing kind of doesn't sit right on my book. The, this anime feels really put together in a bad way. It feels thrown together, more or less. Because everything everything kind of just sits on a specific place just to, at the end, they have to mention it so it can make sense by the end. Because, oh, the girls don't actually get that many fans at the beginning and so on and so forth but by the end we notice that the fans are not necessarily the public but people that they're that are helping them something like oh it's not the guy who goes to the concert really it's like the photographer who's doing the um, cover for the album or it's not them it's not someone that goes to the show but something someone that's producing it and so on and so forth and the whole thing kind of feels way too purpose made f just for that cathartic moment it's not really that you couldn't like do this but the um, the setup and the payoff it, they don't actually feel right when they're that obvious you know it doesn't you, you can't like you can't draw drama from one thing to then circumvent it and deliver the cathartic moment by the another it, it, it feels really really cheesy on that front like the whole story doesn't actually make sense whatsoever because at this point we don't actually know what's the struggle here why why did we struggle in the first place we have all these connections that got us here what what is this like <laughs> the whole thing kind of feels weird but then again i'm i will try to stay positive here at the end of the day this anime 
is a good conclusion to the whole series in my humble opinion because by the end of it it at the very least sets up what could be but probably won't it, what could be and lived happily ever after with most of the things that it presents well resolved at the end i1 continues to be i1 the girls from makeup girls they still are working towards being uh, getting bigger getting more not notoriety and keep on that good fight as idols now they have co-highs under studies and it kind of feels great in that way it feels at the very least we st when i look back and see the start how the girls started with improvised costumes the really coupled together venue on their first debut when you look at where they where they come from and where they are now it feels cathartic in that way in that uh, looking at the overarching story let's say the whole series to this point it feels really great to see and to watch the development of this growth the development of the story and in a way i can give this this anime a pass considering everything that came before it but as i said in the intro i don't think it, this is a good anime overall and but again if you're following me on this journey and watching this this mess uh, i feel like you need to watch this to really nail it down and say this was wake up girl the anime at the very least because apparently the idol group still running i don't know <laughs> but yeah that's about it so before i start rambling about something not related to this thank you guys for listening thank you guys for watching please like please share please follow depending on the platform we're in and i hope to stick around for next time bye